The Carno is a very bold and possibly game-changing generator. Instead of combustion, it produces electricity through heat transfer, known as flameless oxidation. It is a type of combustion process that occurs at a high temperature without a flame, so the reaction is equal across the chamber. The advantage is that there's very little nitrous oxide emission, but there's also a cost to the weight of their overall machine compared to a normal combustion variant. Now, the idea of the free piston linear generator is nothing new. However, innovations like 3D printing and computational modeling have allowed parts like the heat exchanger to be engineered at a three-dimensional level. And this allows this type of generator to be more efficient and maybe even practical. To understand this machine a little bit better, we have to look at the history of the free piston generator. This particular type of engine, well, at least in the combustion state, stems back to the 1930s. And it was known that they could have a high power to weight ratio with the elimination of the crankshaft. But it wasn't until 2014 when Toyota actually built a real prototype, which generated three-phase AC electricity. This particular variant utilizes permanent magnets in a set of coils to generate electricity on both strokes. And the claim was that it produced around 15 horsepower at over 40% efficiency. The problem with these types of single piston designs is that they're inherently unbalanced and you need some sort of rebound device. Naturally, it makes more sense to go to a dual piston or even an opposed piston design for more efficiency and more control. But one of the main pursuits of this type of generator is to be able to control the compression ratio so that you can run multiple different types of fuels. Libertine is currently building a 120 kilowatt combustion unit, and they hope to control the compression ratio from 8 to 1 all the way to 30 to 1. Just like the Toyota Free Piston variant, it utilizes coils and permanent magnets to generate this power. The other take on the Free Piston is to go flameless oxidation. As stated before, the advantage to this is that there's very little nitrous oxide produced, and it can pretty much run on any fill that produces heat, so there's pretty good flexibility in this type of machine. The disadvantage is that these types of units are typically heavier and quite large. One of the more recent developments is the main spring linear generator, and it is roughly 20 feet long at a production of around 115 kilowatts. This particular system works with two translators moving within a center reaction zone. A set of stationary copper coils surrounds each translator forming a linear electromagnetic machine. It's able to measure a turnaround position at which the level of compression triggers the reaction. And this allows it to run on different fuels. So this type of unit might work for a stationary application like a building, but it would definitely be challenging to scale this down and incorporate it into a range extender. This leads us into the Carnot generator. And once again, it does utilize flameless oxidation, yet it's quite a bit smaller and produces around 200 kilowatts. This one is very interesting because they reverted back to two chambers and one single piston. So this particular unit is based on the Stirling cycle, where fuel and air oxidize in the chamber to generate heat. Heat exchangers transfer the heat into workable gas, which moves the piston and moves the magnets into the coils to produce power. It is interesting to see the Carnot come out because it does exemplify that 3D printing along with computer modeling can allow for more efficient heat exchangers and thus increase the overall efficiency of the engine. This means that it can be lighter and more powerful. However, this brings up a cost debate and the company does claim that it's a better pathway forward for a startup instead of having a huge manufacturing plant, but there is a scalability problem when it comes to additive manufacturing. So this type of engine might not be a universal solution. So it is interesting to see that the heat exchanger can be advanced through additive manufacturing to increase efficiency and the overall power output of the engine. However, is this the engine of the future? Well, it does make one question because even the Cardinal generator is still quite large for its power rating. And it's not something that is going to go head to head with a combustion engine. But they also claim that the nitrous oxide reduction is worth it for stationary applications. So I do think there is a future engine which could maybe even displace the Carnot. And that is an opposed free piston linear generator that incorporates HCCI. 
The homogeneous charge compression ignition, and I wouldn't be able to say that too many times in a row, combines both the gasoline and diesel engine together into one form. And it's a form of combustion in which the fuel and oxidizer are compressed to the point of auto ignition. So it can achieve gasoline engine-like emissions with diesel engine-like efficiency. This means that there is very little NOx produced without a Cadillac converter. Thankfully, new techniques like computational fluid dynamics would be able to simulate HCCI combustion. And with the right microprocessor control, these types of engines are now becoming possible, with the most recent and infamous Mazda Sky Active X engine. There's also quite a bit of research into HCCI linear generators, stemming from Sandia National Laboratories to the Beijing Institute of Technology. In conclusion, the free piston linear generator has many technological innovations that are on the horizon. The Carnot design is very interesting because it's probably one of the most efficient prototypes out there for its kind, but it can definitely be outperformed by the combustion engine. The question is whether or not HCCI will actually be implemented into the free piston, and if it can, then we can actually have the best of both worlds of high power to weight ratios with very little nitrous oxide emissions. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.